Boston Dynamics is well known for its high-octane videos of their robots performing incredible feats. Atlas, a humanoid robot created by Boston Dynamics, has become famous for his unequaled ability to jump over obstacles, perform backflips, and dance. But it was an unparalleled behind-the-scenes glimpse of how Boston Dynamics engineers built and trained Atlas to run the parkour track. The video depicts some of Atlas's shortcomings, a departure from the company's usual practice of displaying highly polished results of its work. So is this Wonder Robot going to make an entry into our home soon? What are the challenges it faces? In this video, we are going to discuss this in details, but before we begin, for everyone who is new to our channel, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we fill you in on every thrilling discovery and mind-blowing insights in the world of robots, AIs, and future technology. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for a ton of exciting robot content coming your way. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Commercial versus Research Robotics Boston Dynamics is a for-profit corporation, according to the IRS. The company seeks to market products and commercialize its technology. It is also a research facility full of engineers and scientists who desire to push the boundaries of science, regardless of the commercial rewards. The fact that Boston Dynamics has changed ownership numerous times in the last decade, from Google to SoftBank to Hyundai, demonstrates how difficult it is to align these two goals. Spot, a multi-purpose robo-dog, and Stretch, a mobile robo-arm that can move boxes, are two commercial robots that the company has already released. Both have potential uses in different industries, and Boston Dynamics may be able to transform them into successful ventures thanks to Hyundai's production capabilities. Atlas, on the other hand, is not a business venture for Boston Dynamics. It's referred to as a research platform by the corporation. This isn't because humanoid biped robots aren't commercially viable. Our houses, towns, factories, offices, and products have all been built to accommodate our bodies. A biped robot that can walk surfaces and handle objects like we do could be one of the most valuable business prospects in the robotics industry, if not the most valuable. It would have a significant advantage over current mobile robots, which are limited to specific situations – flat ground, homogeneous lighting, flat-sided items, and so on – or require their environments to be altered to fit their limitations. Biped robots, on the other hand, are extremely difficult to manufacture. Atlas, the most advanced biped robot, is still a long way from having the smooth and varied motor skills that humans have. A glance at some of the shortcomings in the new Atlas film demonstrates the gap that still has to be bridged. Bipedal Robots Challenges Growth and learning occur simultaneously in both animals and humans. As your body and brain develop, you learn to crawl, stand, walk, run, leap, and participate in sports. However, it is impossible to grow robots at least for the foreseeable future. Engineers in robotics begin with a fully formed robot which is iteratively updated as they experiment with it and must teach it all of the abilities it requires to efficiently use its body. Engineers in robotics, like many other branches of research, look for shortcuts, create models, and optimize for goals to avoid copying nature in its entirety. Boston Dynamics researchers and scientists believe that tuning Atlas for parkour performance will allow them to attain all the intricacies of bipedal motor skills and, of course, create sensational videos that get millions of views on YouTube. A robot's ability to do a backflip may never prove helpful in a business setting, Boston Dynamics wrote in a blog post. But it doesn't take much imagination or industry experience to see why Atlas being able to execute the same range of movements and physical jobs as humans would be beneficial. The spectrum of potential applications will be essentially unlimited if robots can ultimately respond to their environs with the same level of dexterity as an average human adult. So, if you can teach a robot to do backflips, jump across platforms, vault over barriers and sprint on very narrow roads, you've taught it all the other basic movement and physical skills that all humans possess. Parkour, as narrow and specific as it may appear, provides the Atlas team with a great sandbox in which to experiment with new behaviors, the blog continues. It's a full-body exercise that demands Atlas to stay balanced in a variety of settings and fluidly adapt from one behavior to the next. Atlas's development has been nothing short of remarkable. Apart from the amazing maneuvers, it demonstrates some extremely intriguing foundational abilities, such as correcting its equilibrium after landing awkwardly. According to Boston Dynamics, the engineers were able to generalize Atlas's behavior by giving it a collection of template behaviors, like as jumping and vaulting, 
and allowing it to adapt those behaviors to new settings. However, the robot still has trouble grasping several very basic talents that all primates share. When Atlas misses a jump or loses its equilibrium, for example, it can fall flat on its face. Primates reflexively stretch out their arms in such situations to cushion the impact of the fall and protect their head, neck, eyes, and other essential organs. These abilities are developed long before we begin running on tiny ledges or jumping from platforms. A complicated environment such as a parkour track aids in the discovery and resolution of these issues far more quickly than a flat and basic environment. Simulation versus On-the-Job Training Physical world experience is one of the most difficult aspects of robotics. This is very effectively demonstrated in the Atlas video. After Atlas is damaged, a team of engineers must repair it on a regular basis. This cycle raises costs while slowing training. Scale is also an issue when it comes to training robots in the physical world. The AI algorithms that control the motions of robots like Atlas require orders of magnitude more training than a human would. Taking Atlas through the parkour course thousands of times would be impossible to scale and would require years of training as well as significant repair and adjustment expenditures. Of course, the study team might reduce training time by running many prototypes on various tracks in concurrently. However, this would greatly increase the prices and necessitate significant investments in equipment and real estate. Simulated learning is an alternative to real-world training. Software programmers construct three-dimensional environments in which a virtual version of the robot can be trained quickly and without incurring the costs of physical training. There are various virtual environments for the training of embodied AI. Simulated training has become an important component of robotics and self-driving automobiles, and there are several virtual environments for the training of embodied AI. Virtual worlds, on the other hand, are only a rough representation of the real world. They always overlook minor nuances that might have a big influence, and they don't eliminate the necessity for robots to be trained in the real world. Some of the obstacles that are difficult to reproduce in a virtual environment, such as slipping from an unstable ledge or getting the tip of the foot stuck in a fissure, are exposed in the physical world. Several of these incidents are depicted in the Atlas video. When Atlas reaches a barrier, it uses its arms to vault over it, which is a remarkable example. This is a simple practice that does not necessitate a lot of physical effort. Atlas accomplishes the trick, but its arm rattles uncomfortably. According to Scott Kundersma, Atlas Team Lead, if you or I were to vault over a barrier, we would take advantage of certain features of our bodies that would not translate to the robot. For example, because the robot has a spine or shoulder blades, it lacks the range of motion that you and I do. The robot's midsection is very weighty and its arm joints are weak. These kinds of subtleties are difficult to reproduce and must be tested in the real world. Perception Atlas, according to Boston Dynamics, navigates the world via perception. Atlas employs depth sensors to produce point clouds of the environment and detect its surrounds, according to the company's website. This technology is similar to that used in self-driving cars to recognize roads, objects, and people in their environment. Atlas maps its surroundings using depth sensors. This is just another shortcut taken by the AI community. Depth sensors aren't used in human vision. To develop a mental picture of the environment, we use stereo vision, parallax motion, intuitive physics, and data from all of our sensory systems. Our vision of the world isn't flawless and can be manipulated, but it's good enough to make us good navigators of the physical world for the most part. It will be intriguing to see if the vision and depth sensors alone will be sufficient to bring Atlas up to human navigation standards, or if Boston Dynamics will build a more complex sensory system for its flagship robot. Atlas has a long way to go still. For starters, the robot will require hands in order to handle stuff, which is a difficult undertaking in and of itself. Atlas is unlikely to become a commercial product anytime soon, but it provides Boston Dynamics and the robotics industry with an excellent platform for learning about the issues that nature has solved. It's difficult for me to picture a world 20 years from now where there aren't capable mobile robots that move with grace, reliability, and work alongside people to enrich our lives, Kundersma of Boston Dynamics said. However, we're still in the early stages of shaping that future. I'm hoping that demonstrations like these give people a taste of what's possible. This brings today's video to an end. We hope you liked it. If so, please subscribe to the channel, like and share the video, and press the bell icon to receive our latest notifications. Any other topics you want us to make videos on? 
do let us know in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. Ciao!